What is going on, everybody? What is that? Get that out of here. All right. Anyway, how's it going? <laughs> Off to a good start. A couple weeks away, I just fucking lose it. It's just all gone. Anyway, I am back here with a returning guest, Mr. Trevor Stranad from The Black Dahlia Murder. What's up, dude? T-Boz, as they like to call me. Papa Skeletal Trev. Lunch. That's the Papa man. Papa Trev. The man. T-Boz. Travassier. <laughs> Dude, Travazier took me out. That's that. That's the best one. That's a uh, that's a Ryan Lee Williams joke right there. That is fucking amazing. Uh, fucking best nickname Travazier. I've ever had. Yeah, easily, easily. <laughs> fucking. So what have you been up to, man? Since since uh, last we spoke. Well, I've been inside the entire time since then. Well, not almost. Uh, we went to Michigan. We filmed uh, Eula Mall since I last talked to you. Yes. Uh, w- which was us playing live in four locations on four different days. And um, yeah, I'm still putting that together. Uh, we're getting to the end of the editing phase, and it is hilarious. And I'm so pumped that it has come together, you know, so nicely. Right. Uh, we really had our fingers crossed to get a good host. And now we got Neil Hamburger. Oh. His, uh, his, I was watching through his, all of his footage and all the takes and. I was dying, man. So, like, this is definitely on brand for us, and D- people are going to like it a lot. Didn't he just do some of those, like, Mr. Bungle dates, or am I tripping out? Uh, yes, he did. And okay. he actually uh, used to tour manage Mr. Bungle. Nice. Yeah, nice. yeah. So that's kind of where that all comes together, you know? And I was I was wondering about that. I was like, why Neil Hamburger? Why is he? Uh... And I guess he played with the Secret Chiefs 3. So oh, I don't shit. Know. Pretty cool. Pretty Thank cool shit. Old Secret Small. Chiefs, man. Small world, man. Our, our but, little uh, our little metal bubble that we live in. Yeah. yeah. Fucking so so you them all, for those of the people watching who don't know what that is somehow, uh, who have come to this stream. What yeah. what is it? I you explained it a little bit, like the four yeah. locations live stream type of thing, but like a little bit what what do we got going on here? Ulamall is our streaming event. To remind you that we have a new record and we are alive and we are in fact a functioning band that does stuff <laughs> um so uh you know this is our version of the streaming thing that everybody's been doing it has our twist on it there's a lot of humor there's a lot of like us letting our personality hang out there's sick live music it sounds awesome our sound guy marshall weiserick also the drummer uh, wretched. wretched yeah yeah, yeah. i fucking yeah. love him shout out to wretched. marsh dog yeah, awesome marsh dog he's killer oh, yeah. anyway like he masterminded filming all of this like we had a skeleton crew that was like him um his girlfriend michelle mm-hmm. and um alan's girlfriend also helped out too and um yeah so you know this is us doing the streaming thing it's very funny it, it's got skits it's got a lot of stupidity um i feel like it's better than fool them all like, I feel like we kind of missed the mark on Fool Em All. It got a little serious for my taste, I think. Right. But um, I feel like this is, like, one of those things that's going to go down in our history. You know what I mean? Like, so I'm encouraging people, man. You don't want to miss this shit. It's going to be awesome. You're going to crack up. You're going to headbang. And uh, there's lots of surprises. We've got special guests. we got clay. We got a claymation segment with voiceovers by our, our own Brian Eschbach, which came out hilarious. Yes. And um, yeah, man, just the more we keep tweaking it, the better it gets. And uh, got a few more days before we got to send it in. But uh, yeah, it's exciting, man. It it launches December 18th at 7 p.m. East Coast time. But it'll be up for the next 48 hours for anybody who can't watch it right then or wants to view it repeatedly. You can watch it as much as you want. Um, Or, you know, you're in a different time zone, whatever. But uh yeah, man, it's out there. It's it's ready. It's was... almost ready to be hatched. Okay, so it sounds it sounds huge. It sounds like a huge undertaking. Like there, I mean, you mentioned you all had to travel to fucking Detroit or to Michigan rather. Uh, you know that you had to, you know, get a bunch of people and camera crew. Were was there anything like particularly difficult making this all happen? I know that like getting traveling at all right now is such a pain in the ass. I had to fly out to Denver for music stuff, you know, a few months back. And it right. was, it was aggressively stressful. So, uh, <laughs> um, the airport situation was stressful. Um, you know, the process of being with the guys was cool. I missed them. Obviously yeah. I haven't seen them in a long time. Uh, this is the longest I have gone without seeing Brian 
probably since the beginning of the band you know what i mean yeah but anyway um really the hardest part was that we were working with such a skeleton crew like the sound crew was the video crew right so each each location had a lot of setup you know what i mean so in a way it was like being back on tour again because there was a lot of setting up and waiting around and you know what i mean like doing it consecutively um four songs in four days um just made it seem like tour again like there was a lot of work to be done a lot of setup and um that whole thing was was pretty draining that part of it yeah but um, you know it came out awesome and uh it was worth the kind of the hardship but uh, uh as soon as we got home we got wind that alan is not feeling so hot so alan goes and gets tested he tests positive. Oh shit! Then, then Marshall tests and tests positive, and then Woody was also hanging around, being in the ape suit, our old sound guy, right. and he also tested positive. So we had a COVID scare Jesus. there, where I mean, I went and got tested right when I got back, negative. But right. then I was skeptical because it was so soon after I gotten back that um I went and got tested again, and um. Then we had the guys that were testing positive. They tested again negative, and like it was a whole hoopla thing. So for a while there, I was locking myself down, and uh, I wasn't feeling so great. But it was probably just some kind of other flu or some shit. But uh, right. that was, was my COVID my COVID scare part two. I've already had part one earlier in this thing. But... So brutal, man. I was gonna ask if those guys, the other guys who tested positive, were like symptomatic or anything, or if they had to fucking lock um, down. Alan or... really was at first. He was so convinced. He couldn't taste. He couldn't do shit. Um, he got hit really hard for a couple of days and then it kind of like went away. So like he was the one that like physically got nailed the worst out of it. If he yeah. even really had the real thing or, you know, I don't really know how. Right. How well, it's, these tests I are feel like there. a lot of the tests, like it's, it really depends on where you go. There's at least over here in California, there's like a fucking sign for a COVID test on every, every fucking block. It's, it's like, it's like the new will buy your house type of thing. Right. It's like, these, Oh yeah. Yeah. These very like scammy almost like, you know, just pay us a yeah. premium and we'll take care of everything from there. And we spray you know. painted this on the sign with a stencil. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, exactly. exactly. Uh, yeah. It's like that here. It's really easy to get tested. Yeah. Uh, you just like call a phone number and they tell you what site to go to and you'll have an appointment there. And, um, you know, I've been tested three times now out right. here right. and, uh, they make it pretty, pretty easy. One time I went, there was literally no, not a fucking soul in line. And it was, it was amazing. Um, just must wal- been... I just waltzed right in there <laughs> and they just jammed that shit up in my nose to the back of my brain. Ugh. The first test I got, they didn't go that deep. And I was like, oh, that's no big deal. I don't know yeah. what everybody's crying about. And then the next two I got, they like, it came, it came out the back of my head basically. <laughs> And it reminded uh, me of when I um, got tested for STDs a long time ago, yeah. when they would like stick shit up your dick. Oh yeah, and, dude. Uh, those they, those they old stuck school fucking the metal like, Q-tip, syphilis fucking just fucking <laughs> yeah. u- urethral sounding fucking. Yeah. Ugh, ugh. And the the lady the lady told me she's like, no matter what happens, do not put your hands on me. Like, yeah. okay, this is going to feel really good then, huh? Yeah, right. Yeah. <laughs> do not grab so, the back of my head, sir. That's yeah. Do not fucking... freak out. Yeah. <laughs> and, uh, yeah, I just remember her sticking that thing in and just twisting it around. <laughs> and um, yeah. Meanwhile, you're just like, ah, ah. Yeah, pretty much. <laughs> pretty much, dude. Oh, my God. That's anyway, yeah, so so go get tested for STDs, too, you, you yeah. freaks. Yeah, you dirty, dirty birdies. Uh, dirty birdies. <laughs> Fuck. <laughs> so outside of the covid scare and you know traveling in the airports and all that fun stuff i mean i'm sure there's positives of the whole thing uh i mean it, it was fun dude it was really fun and um i'm about to like watch the entire supposed finished thing yeah uh, later today it's not been color treated or anything yet but um i'm going to see a lot of footage of me blacked out that i do not know what is i'm gonna do <laughs> yet so so this is interesting and funny and i also don't know what happened to alan but i've seen a few shots of alan bleeding out of his face from it while he's, he's dressed up as santa claus and blood is coming out of like the bridge of his nose and he's like totally trashed so 
I know that we got into some shenanigans for sure. <laughs> That's fucking and amazing. The next day, I definitely knew that because I was embalmed alive. But um, yeah, <laughs> yeah, that that was the last time I really tied one on, and I hadn't drank up for a long time going, you know, before this. Right. Um, just like being hungover during COVID sucks, man. It's already getting hard as I get older, but now you have like. Oh yeah, the world's burning too. Yeah. The world is burning, <laughs> and and I'm also out of serotonin and just like, God, I can't even go to the store buy a goddamn Pedialyte. I'm fucking yeah, yeah. I, there's no Pedialyte left. I can't even wipe my ass. There's no, yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know. So like, I get hungover for two days. The first day I hurt, and the second day I'm like mentally like, yeah, hate myself. Yeah. You know what I mean? So, yeah. so you know, the drinking is having less of, of an appeal. I, you know, I'm try. I'm hoping to segue out of it. Honestly, <laughs> I uh, I'm right there with you, man. Like really, anything, any any illicit substance, I they all just give me fucking anxiety now. It's just like, I you know, I I smoked weed for a super long time. Can't do that anymore. Got real bad anxiety. I actually, the way I quit is kind of hilarious. I was fucking so it was like my first time tracking with a legion, like at the end of 2015, and uh, up until that point giant stoner like smoking weed all the time like fucking you know all, all day every day and uh i quit for like three or four months because i was like oh, this is like you know this new band and they you know they're already kind of popular like i, I want to make a good first impression to the fans want my voice to be in like perfect fucking like just mm -hmm. and uh so i was like i'm gonna quit smoking weed i'm gonna quit smoke weed and you know let myself you know just just get back to it so i fly out to denver and uh, I record the album, and you know, after my week of recording is done, I'm like, "Fuck yeah, I can start smoking weed." I'm gonna treat myself. I'm gonna get, you know, it was before weed was recreationally legal in California, ah, right. so I'm like, "All right, I'm gonna, you know, go to a dispensary and fucking grab myself a joint and fucking just, just yeah, I'm gonna go buy some legal weed. Just walk in there and be like, I could do this whenever I want." And just, you know, fucking. So I went and I paid, you know, seventy dollars for a fucking eighth. <laughs> And, uh, <laughs> and, uh, I, I, I went back to Greg's house and I like rolled up a blunt and I just pieced the whole thing to my face, just like, just like a big old grammar and was just like, holy fuck. And I started getting like the, like, oh no, like fucking just like, <laughs> yeah, dude, I was just like, oh God, I feel like I'm in high school again. What the fuck is happening? And so it, I, you know, it passed. I went to sleep. I was like, all right, I was, you know fucking woke up the next morning and was like that sure was weird anyway so i fucking you know dumped the roach out into a little bowl and took a rip off of it and was just like right back to it and was just like oh no oh Why? no like the, <laughs> the thing that people always like warned me about right where they were just like yeah dude you're gonna hit like your mid to late 20s and like weed's just gonna make you anxious and paranoid and all that shit and i was just like ne weed never come on like never. fucking and here i am Five years later, still still can't smoke weed. It just makes oh, me man. anxious. But that, uh, al alcohol starting to get get me there too. It's like I'll have one too many drinks and just be like, "Am I okay? Is I am I? Oh oh no! Like it's yeah." Yeah, I'm sure if, if if I saw a tally of every day I've lost to being hungover, it yeah. would be a pretty <laughs> sobering revelation. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, yeah, yeah, yeah. There we are. Well, it sounds fun as fuck uh for those of you yeah, interested. it was fun it was really fun to see the guys um and just like be back together and be like cracking jokes and just kind of resume like right where we left off you know what i yeah. mean like like we put verminous out and then we didn't see each other you know what i mean <laughs> like we had yeah. a record we haven't played any shows on it we you know everything we've done for the album has been like remotely via the internet basically so you know, it was cool to be back together. It was cool to play the songs, uh, you know, some of which we hadn't played together, period, ever yet. Wow. Um, so, yeah, the um, the fourth and final block of um, Eula Mall is four new songs from the from the Verminous record. So. Fuck yes. Fuck yeah. That sounds so. fucking sick. Well, for those of you watching who are eagerly awaiting, you can buy tickets and merch bundles at a uh, ulamall.nightshiftmerch.com uh and that is also where the stream will be taking place uh, yes sir if you can't make it though still buy merch still buy a ticket and there's going to be a 48 hour on demand video 
uh, for ticket holders. So even if you can't be there during the exact time whatever that's happening, you have like two days afterwards to uh, to make it happen. So do yeah, it. some people some people are getting butt hurt about not being there right when it launches, but yeah. there won't be anything different from showing up late. I don't, yeah. you know, there's there's no like ongoing chat or anything like that. So yeah, totally. You no, know, don't feel like you're missing out if you're not there right at launch you right know, you still get to see my balls and dick hell yeah brother at some point i hell definitely yeah. know I, that there's some nudity to come i know i come, remember at least it, at huh. least that much that i i dropped my pants at some some point i hope so they he, the small truth will be known to to all if it's, <laughs> it's, it's <laughs> uh I'm sure. I'm sure you have a, a perfectly medium dick, Trevor. I'm sure it's you know. I'm sure it's yeah. Fine. We got we got um, some medium pixels to put and, over it. And 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 by medium dick, I mean it can talk to ghosts. I'm sure it's size wise. Yeah. Just, oh just little... <laughs> yeah. That's I meant to. I meant to. <laughs> I meant to just have my dick come on today and talk. Yeah. Just be like, hey, what's going on? What's going on? I'm Trevor's cock. I... <laughs> so I have a I have a question from a fan. Something that yep. I I feel you may have already been asked uh before but uh darren lorney wants to know what has been your favorite album cover art uh black dahlia albums are always very like color coordinated uh throughout mm -hmm. the years so what's your if you had to pick a, a favorite um man this is gonna sound like a cop-out because it's the newest record but i really like that verminous one yeah and uh you know it has the kind of um the same setup as that we used on Nocturnal and um, Ever Black to a degree, you know, like the the white logo, the uh, the white logo at the bottom, the bright color that's kind of like, you know, defining the album. Yeah. And um, you know, I just I just think it's like the most deluxe version of that. It has the most details and the most kind of shit to get lost in and stare at. And uh, Juan Castellano, baby, he knocked that shit out. He killed it. Um, I thank him for that. You know, it's it's so important to strike hard with a good album cover. Yeah. And uh, you know, and uh, to keep the legacy going. You know, feel it's I feel a lot of pressure to uh, to uh, you know stack up to what we've done in the past in that regard. You know, the first two records I just want to erase from eternity. Basically, <laughs> they like you know, it was before we had a budget, so they look like Mario Paint, basically. You know, or like yeah. <laughs> well, I. Uh... You know, as you know, but some of the fans might not. I just recently sent you on Instagram a picture of a little treasure I found at a friend's house not so long ago. That fucking OG demo CD. Ah, uh, uh, yeah, man. yeah, that's dude, cool. That thing fucking slaps. It is so good. I like. Ah, uh, uh, I like the uh, Cold Blooded Epitaph EP actually better than Unhallowed. Yeah, you know, like they aren't that far apart time wise, really. But um, I just like the recording better. It has like more bass guitar. It's a little more dirty. It's a little more. I don't know what to say about it, dude. It's just it's I just, just raw, prefer... man. It's fucking yeah, raw. Yeah, it's, it's raw, dude. I prefer it. I'm gonna. And uh, I'd like to put that out again someday. Like that, those versions haven't been available to the public like yeah. since the, that EP came out. Yeah, that was the crazy thing about it. Listening to it was just like. I've never like. I mean, I have. I'm gonna. I'm gonna date myself here real quick and make us both feel like old fucking senior citizens. But I was in a band that covered Contagion in my freshman year of high school, and uh, fucking, I hadn't heard those EP songs since like back then. So it was just fucking crazy being like, oh my god, it's like rare to like fucking hear Black Dahlia stuff that I'm not familiar with at this point. So. It was that uh, um that painted black cover like got us a lot of mileage back then. It um, did. I, I, remember... I remember when when we couldn't escape it, dude. Like the first like year or two after a hollow came out, and we were like you know actually touring and stuff, and people yeah. would be like requesting that all the time. And uh, I kind of regret not doing it now, but maybe some maybe at our last show when I'm naked, we'll play that. Yeah, just paint it black, just fucking yeah, pissing I'm, I'm on everyone. It'll be, be great. Yeah, I'm gonna piss on everyone yeah. with a um totally flaccid penis that's the dream so, honestly is just like i want to be so big on everybody i want to be so famous that i can just fucking i can just piss on people on stage or at like parties or just where just fucking you know just go for it just you know never get in uh, trouble man right. there's this uh <laughs> this band from detroit shit fucker yeah and uh there's sort of like a, a cross between venom and gg allen oh my god and they um the singer <laughs> 
has definitely pissed into the crowd a few times when I seen him. That's I that's also saw beautiful. him like he's wearing assless chaps one time and he turned around during this guitar solo, like he plays bass, and he, he licked his whole hand and then shoved it in his ass like in front of the crowd. <laughs> um so like just you know, anything that shock people in this band will do. They're uh, fucking it's awesome. fucking incredible. I mean, it's it's not quite shitting into your hand and then going and punching someone in the face with it, you know? It's not but, it's not but, quite know, Gigi maybe, Allen. Not quite there. Well, you but know, he'll get it's pretty, there. He'll get it's pretty there close. Yeah, I yeah, gotta give him time, right? You know. Um, like he's got like his dick hanging out in the band photos and stuff. Yeah. Like <laughs> it's like he does not give a shit. It's awesome. I fucking love it. So well speaking of shows, uh you guys have some touring booked for 2022. Got any plans yes. for 2021? We just, I know we just announced a tour for 2021, but like at the very end, I feel like that's right. the, yeah, the, that, the earliest that window. Awesome, by the way, that's an insane bill. Yeah, I'm the, stoked. Uh, yeah, we have something brewing for um, like April in Australia okay. this year or 2021 rather. Yeah. But, um, you know, we'll see like. Australia has their, you know, they got their shit unlocked. They got like less than 50 people that have it or some shit. Yeah. But we, however, I don't know if they're going to let us in. You know, yeah, what I that's mean? the big in thing. Reality. I was, so, uh, I was making a joke to someone earlier today being like, dog, like if, if the U.S. doesn't get its fucking shit together soon, come to America is going to become the next fucking come to Brazil because like no one's going to tour here. Like, oh, yeah. I mean? It's going to be us doing all caps on everybody. Yeah. Come to America. Come yeah, to America. For, like for <laughs> sure. Like it's just it's just getting to a point now where it's like, holy fuck, like what's it going to take? And uh, I mean, well, in Australia, that was the thing is like to get it down. It was like 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 legal shit where it was like you cannot leave your fucking house or we will arrest you like i don't oh, yeah. know if See, it was that severe awesome. but it was for sure ticketing it was for sure like you know something oh, that de- half of america would be like i'm gonna bring my gun outside and if you try to arrest me i'll <laughs> shoot you in the dick like it's fucking you know but it's it's crazy but that's what it took in australia to like get it down that low um and they had if a few only, spikes once only... they lifted shit but Right, yeah. If only we'd come on so strong initially, you know, we could yeah. be sitting pretty right now. Yeah. And uh, you know, but we're not. We're not. Come to America. <laughs> come to, yeah. When when come Indonesia? Yeah. <laughs> when when? Yeah. No, that's that's been like the biggest resounding response to that to that tour announcement we did yesterday. Was it was just like, damn, that's a fucking sick lineup. You should make it like have this in the states. And I'm just like. I, I yeah, would love we that. Should, we should have anything in the States. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Mis- Mister. God. Um, I'm trying to think of what else we have in the pipes. Um, we moved our, our European tour back. Mm-hmm. Um, that was supposed to be coming up pretty soon, obviously, but that was not going to happen. Right. So, you know, the same lineup, um, Rings of Saturn and Viscera across Europe and UK, but that's been moved to, to like January of, uh, 2022 right so that was a bummer a bit but necessary you know totally yeah man a lot of a lot of pushback a lot of dates being being pushed and you know for those 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 people that are watching for uh our usual industry tidbits that's a whole different fucking world now too man it's like a whole different like you know the offers that are coming through and like tentative shit it's like uh there's these things when you're touring uh, for those of you who have never toured before, called door deals, where instead of getting like a flat guaranteed rate, they pay you, uh, you know, they give you a much lower guarantee and then pay you a percentage based off of how many people come through the door. Um, and there's a lot more of those I'm seeing being thrown around, you know, f- to, to yeah, certain I, offers to certain bands, and I it's bet. just like it's a it's a whole lot of so it's a, it's a brave new world out there with all these yeah. venues that have shut down and all these you know different kinds of offers being thrown around it's like you know even places as big as live nation you know are, are, are being like yeah we'd love to have that band and it's like okay give us an offer and they're like well we'll we'll get back to you on that How about it's a like, deal? yeah it's like no nah, man come on so it's, uh, <laughs> it's waiting till 2022 i feel like is almost a better idea just to give right you know yeah, the dust I mean, some time I'm, to fucking settle in 2021 i'm not looking forward to the the face of touring here like how it's going to start out i think it's going to be weird and like I don't know if it's going to be like playing a small venue for three nights in the same town yeah, or like, or what, you know what I mean? But it's, 
it's going to be worse. It already sucked. (laughs) (laughs) Now it's going to be worse. (laughs) Uh, Yep. Yep. But I think that it'll, I think it'll, there's going to be a a paradigm shift. You know what I mean? Like there's going to be a big change that happens where it's like, at first it's going to suck. There's going to be like, everybody's going to be kind of afraid to like jump in with both feet. But I think that the first couple rounds of touring when it comes back are going to be so sick that like all of those, those fear of losses and all these, you know, contingencies and safety nets are just going to fucking vanish. And uh, you know, the people behind the scenes are going to feel more comfortable kind of bringing things back to normal. If not back to, you know, a, a raised platform where it's just like, oh, like these all did so well and are continuing to do so well. You know, let's, you know, we can afford better offers and can afford, you know, bigger venues and all this kind of stuff. So hopefully yeah, I hope, I hope so. that's me being cautiously optimistic. But, you know, I think that there's there's a real possibility for that happening. Um, so moving on with my my questions here so I don't keep you here till fucking Christmas. Uh you often talk about how many CDs and shirts you buy. You're a big merch dude. Uh, not only for your collection, but to support underground metal, which is obviously something, you know, fans of you are well aware of with the obituaries and all that good stuff. What else do you think fans can do right now while touring's not a thing to support bands? Um, you know, definitely check out bands that are streaming. There's lots of bands that are streaming for... Um... You know, some are uh, selling it, some aren't. Yeah. Uh, definitely help um, amplify those channels for other people, you know, repost them, uh, get them out there for people. Um, yeah, you know, keep buying music, uh, definitely through Bandcamp or, you know, if you like physical copies, you know, like me, uh, you know, definitely stay on that train. Uh, dude, I was tallying up everything I bought since the... Uh, since the lockdown and uh you could say that i kind of went off the retail therapy deep end yeah. <laughs> uh like once i got the whole list compiled compiled i felt pretty sick to my stomach yeah. <laughs> like i don't exactly have a steady income right now and i'm just uh... like buying 200 fucking cds and four shirts a week and shit yeah. like that yeah but uh yeah it's just you know it's just part of my my dna man i hey, just man. love you know, it we've all, like we've all got our vices, you know, yeah. and, it, and at least your vices are out there, like helping a community grow. You're not just like pissing it away at fucking pissing it away at craps like they did in the 40s. Fucking, <laughs> you know, could it could be worse. You know, I feel like I feel like retail therapy, especially with COVID and all the fucking stir crazy boredom that's been going on. I feel like, you know. Some people are out there supporting Amazon. Some people are out there supporting fucking Walmart. But at least you're out here supporting fucking local bands. Or not even local bands, but just bands in general. You know, it's fucking... Could be worse. Could be worse. Right. So... You know, a, a CD in the mail a day keeps the doctor away. Guys. <laughs> that's, that's right. <laughs> so... I know I already aged us once on this uh, on this little little podcast, but I'm going to do it again. Uh fucking the the old the old one two black dahlia's 20th anniversary is next year man you guys are a fucking you guys can almost legally buy alcohol it's pretty amazing what yeah, uh yeah. how do you how do you feel about that it's like it's no small feat fucking being a band for 20 years and like staying pretty much on top you know what i mean like you guys have never been one of those bands to kind of like you know roller coaster up and down as far as like you know having fans and dedication from the listeners or touring and all that kind of stuff like 20 years of being a very relevant band and like a constantly changing scene must feel pretty good you know fucking uh, when you, when you put it that way riley it's, yeah. <laughs> it, feels, it feels pretty good dude um yeah you know uh 20 years that's crazy as hell i remember like the very You know, Brian and I have been in this band from the beginning, and, uh, you know, obviously we've seen all iterations of this band. And, uh, you know, the rap sheet looks long, like there's been a whole lot of people through the band, but if you were there for it, you know, it's just kind of like a slow evolution, you know what I mean? And, um, yeah, man, uh, you know, we've never been the most original band in the world, but I think that we've been a smart band and made the right decisions and um you know we try to listen to our fans as well as you know follow our hearts with what we create and what we do 
and um you know we've just kind of like realized our unique space within metal i think where yeah. we're not just your average death metal band that you know that was what i wanted to be honestly coming out was just you know lumped in with everything else but um yeah just kind of realizing our weird space in the world and embracing it and i think that's kind of helped our popularity and uh helped give us a unique voice and uh yeah dude i couldn't be more thankful to still be here and still be relevant and you know putting out records that excite people yeah and uh yeah it's it's just my dream continuing to come true you know all i wanted to do was do this you know and um you know there's just no there's no end to to fame you know what i mean it's not a one-time achievement you know you have to like to keep it up and you have to be visible and you know we're kind of dragging our feet being old men and kind of turning it into this digital era of you know being so visible and um you know there's been a little growing pains with that as far as me getting onto twitch and shit like that but uh yeah. i definitely want to get back on there you know i'm seeing it as a missed opportunity right now but um you know now that my eyes have settled from my surgery and i can stare at the screen for a long time yeah. again <laughs> uh, i'm ready to come back and did i won't you, have that won't have that lens laser eye surgery did you get that lasik yeah no oh, you bet you uh. bet Dude, I've been thinking about it. I've been thinking about it a lot. I wear, I'm wearing contacts right now, and uh, I usually wear wear those those big old fucking soda pop fucking yeah, glasses. Yeah, man. You know, I just uh, I wanted to me. It was just like, you know, I could be two kinds of front man. I could be the guy without glasses that can't see everybody in the crowd. Yeah. You know, but I can get buck wild, or the guy with glasses that I've been rocking like the last couple of years where I can really connect with people in the crowd near and far and kind of like lock eyes with them and be like, yeah, I'm, I'm talking to you right now, motherfucker. Yeah. You know, and like that <laughs> goes pretty far. So now I'm going to get the best of both worlds. You I'll be able to headbang if I feel so inclined <laughs> without worrying about my glasses or they won't be filling up with water, like fucking aquariums on stage. Yeah. And, you know, and there's also there's other funny shit like uh, when I'm blind up there, like the first, you know, 18 years of the band or whatever. Um, if something goes wrong on stage, like somebody gets unplugged or something like I literally can't help them. I'm blind. Yeah. Yeah. You know, like I can't see their lips moving to me to tell me the message. <laughs> I can't find the cord that they need me to plug in. Like I'm basically uh... like an infant up there, you know, <laughs> so, like uh, suddenly like I can help. I can I can do anything, man. You know, yeah. it, mostly it was to be a better front man. Like that was the real impetus behind it. You know, like I didn't really mind being a glasses guy in life. You know, but yeah. um, well, there's also there, I think there's people though that are uh, just just disavowing me now. You know, like they're like, you were the king of the nerds, dude. How yeah. how could you betray <laughs> us like this? You know, and you know, so like I I feel like I got to pick on everyone that has glasses now. You know, and shove them in the locker and shit and just. I, uh, you should, you should, you should, you should, you know, fucking be like, I, <laughs> I'm not one of you anymore. And I'm not one of you four eyes. <laughs> Freaks. Well, I remember it's so funny. Cause like I, <laughs> someone, uh, I, I used to wear glasses on stage. Um, because like it's the same thing. I can't fucking see without them. Like I'm so blind. Like, like my, my range of vision is about this far when I'm, yeah, that, you that's know, me. that was me. Yeah. So I've always wanted to do the LASIK thing too, but I wanted, I, you know, I, I just switched to contacts for now. Uh, but when I was wearing glasses on stage, I remember I told someone and they were like, yeah, knock that shit off. Like, don't like, you know, it's, it's, it's good to relate to your fans, but like, you don't want to look like your fan you want to look like the cool guy on stage and i was like that's uh, whatever like i sure like that's that's fine but you know then my my next excuse was i was like well fucking trevor does it and they were just like yeah but like you're not trevor like <laughs> you can't get away with that shit and i'm just I, like yeah, I, I was fucking trying fine. to to liberate but, glasses on stage for everybody yeah, yeah i don't know that it was working <laughs> um there's definitely people that look at it that same way and you know that i have too where it's like I don't want to wear glasses on stage, but I want yeah. to see you motherfuckers and let you know I'm having a good time and yeah. communicate. That's what it was for so. me. Was it was just like I want to see the crowd. I want to like it's right. a it, it's it's a two way connection. You know what I mean? What you were talking right. about, where it's like where you're just uh-huh. like staring at a person. And you're like, like you, like I'm talking to you. I'm singing this uh-huh. at you kind of thing. Like they get that connection, but like being able to like look into the crowd and like see people being stoked and get that energy. It like it's also a connection for me. You know what I mean? Like right. it's like oh, a for sure. It's a big two way thing. It's way it's way easier for me to get stoked 
with my glasses on because I can, like you said, see exactly how the crowd's reacting. I can see yeah. the look on people's faces and, you know, so like now I got the best of both worlds. Um, you know, I'm excited about this. I wouldn't have done it without having this much time off. Yeah. You know what I mean? To like heal. Yeah. And like, I didn't really know how long it was going to take to, to heal and shit. So, you know, this has been kind of a, at least this happened during COVID. And that yeah. was cool. You know? <laughs> I also, uh, I managed to talk Dave Davidson into getting his done. You know, he lives out here where yeah. I see him on the reg and he went to the same doctor. And uh, I told Dave, I told I, I was like, Dave, you know, I told them that you're coming in to get your LASIK done. And, uh, the, you know, the people there really like me. And I, I told them that you're my arch nemesis and to make you blind on purpose. <laughs> <laughs> so, you know, sorry in advance. <laughs> yeah, sorry for when they just draw a big Nike swoosh on your yeah, eye with a laser. If, but... if, if, you need a, if you need a dog, I'll pay for half of it. Yeah. <laughs> Oh, dude, and check this out. Um, when I went and got it done, like right afterwards, like your eyes, your eyes are so sensitive to light, like right. you seriously can't see any bright lights. Like you need like a hood over your head, like an executioner hood, basically. Yeah. And um, uh, you know, like on the way out of there, like I'm just like crying incessantly, and boogers are coming out of my mouth, and my <laughs> girlfriend's like, "Are you are you okay? Are you ready to go?" And I'm like, "Get me out of here!" Yeah. <laughs> so she puts me in. The, you know, we get in the Uber um like i i literally cannot put enough stuff over my head because like it's sunny out and the sun is coming through and it's like burning my fucking eyeballs out and it's terrible so like this whole ride home is like a hell ride and uh you know i'm talking to dave about it whatever you know because i'm trying to like give him the pep talk i'm like you know if you need somebody to go with you and like make sure you get home safe and all that shit i'll totally you know go with you and uh he's like yeah nah no problem and motherfucker goes and gets it done walks out jumps in his uber by himself gets home no fucking problem whatsoever <laughs> what like that did is... you go through the same thing i went through it was like <laughs> it was like hell for me it was complete hell uh, fucking dave dave has that like he's he's got that quiet guy syndrome going on it's like he's like he's like he's very you know he's he's really quiet he's very like calm he's very collected and in control and I feel like those people are like secretly super villains. Like they're, you know, like they have all these powers that we just don't know about. That's, that's oh, that's I've Dave. definitely I've seen Dave get pretty wild. Yeah, when we we toured together. Yeah, uh, I recall in Europe there was a time where we were at some kind of like, you know, when the de the venue turns into the dance party afterwards. Mm -hmm. And um, we I love those. We were both dancing, uh, and we had one testicle hanging out. Yeah. <laughs> I remember that. <laughs> oh my god! <laughs> you know, not alerting any of the public to it, of <laughs> course, but <laughs> just just letting it chill, see who notices, if anyone. Yeah. This this somehow this has reminded me of um when Bam was talking about pissing at the gas station pump while you're pumping gas. Yeah. <laughs> and you just you just take your dick out and just don't look down at it and just start pissing. Yeah. And uh I definitely did that a couple times too. Oh my god, I fucking love it. God, I need to when Allegiant Black Dahlia tour. When? When? It needs to happen. Yeah, I, I need to want to be a part of this. Soon enough. Uh, not soon enough. God. <laughs> fucking So I guess a couple more things before I let you go. One of which is is a is from a fan, Billy Woolette. Uh, ah, I know Billy. Yes, Young Black Dahlia Billy. They call Black him. Dahlia Billy wants to know what is your favorite song to sing on Verminous. Um, well, there's a few that we haven't uh, gotten to yet, actually. But um, so far, um, Child of Night, I think. Yeah. Um, you know, I just, I just love that song. It's got a real morbid angel vibe. The fast morbid angel. We you know we're always mining the slow morbid angel, but this yes. time we went for like the Covenant era kind of thing. And uh, yeah, I like that song. I get to pretend that I'm David Vincent. Yeah. You know, <laughs> my minus the uh, the vinyl pentagram shirt. Yeah. 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 <laughs> can't 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 be a hundred percent. You know. Fucking. Uh fucking is removal of the oak and stake that's on verminous right yeah i like that one i almost brought that one up um, that's that one's that's, that one's my favorite song to sing off of verminous yeah, i think that that might be my favorite song from the record for yeah. sure um 
I just like the songwriting devices in it. Like, um, there's like a whole minute of the opening of the song where I don't do shit. Yeah. Which is like where a lot of Black Dahlia songs are just totally it's fucking right out the gate. Crammed yeah. full of information. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, what we did with a lot of Verminous was kind of pull back in that regard. And, you know, like revealing the chorus and the verse once through without any vocals, like, right. and just like letting them like be catchy and like be a hook. You know what I mean? Like, I think that was a really smart kind of uh, yeah. songwriting move on Brandon's part. And uh, yeah, I just really like that song. It's got the kind of, uh, you know, classic BDM vampire feel. And um, yeah, I like that song. It's got yeah. a, we close the hi hat, which is a, a remarkable moment in DM <laughs> history. We co close the hi hat on a couple songs in this record where we really get into that rockin' territory. Yep. Uh, that's that's definitely like, if you would have told me, you know, 20 years ago that we were going to close the hi hat at some point, I don't think I would have believed you. Uh, nah, no, that's, that's never going to happen. <laughs> it's, it's, it's blasphemous. Fucking. So, uh, I know we talked about this a little bit last time. Um, but guest vocal stuff you've been doing a ton of that in the downtime have you done anything recently that you're super stoked on or looking forward to um i just sang on the new hot graves lp that's coming up and um jamie from the absence is the singer now nice he's cool cool guy one of my one of my favorite vocalists very talented oh yeah and uh it's cool to be on that if you haven't heard hot graves it's like um sort of like midnight like a punky black metal mix right you know it's definitely like spilling beer all over your friends music that kind of <laughs> <laughs> so that was cool definitely cool to do that um i have a couple more coming up here um nothing like super duper high profile in the last while yeah um but uh yeah it's cool to like i'm still kind of like baby stepping into recording myself and um you know so that's been fun it's been a challenge but it's been cool um so you know it's 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 liberating to to be able to record yourself a little yeah. bit it is you know? it is it's uh you can get things really dialed in the way you want to that's been my favorite part about learning about it as well is that i'm like you know i don't have to I'm, there's always like this kind of unspoken stress when i'm in the studio where i'm just like god i just want to get the good takes out of the way and like get get it all solid and do all this kind of stuff but you know, so I don't experiment as much as I feel like I could when I'm in like a proper studio setting. But when I'm at home, you know, fuck it, just do whatever I want. Fucking really explore my right. voice. Right, you got, a you got bit. all the time to do whatever you want. You got nobody there, like to be embarrassed in front of if yeah. you want to get <laughs> get real fucking weird. Yeah. You know. <laughs> so like, yeah, I understand the appeal. Like, I wish that I could get adept enough to like track myself doing like a record or something serious you know what yeah. i mean but yeah. like i don't i don't trust myself enough to like i really want i want like the hardest ass engineer to be like watching me you know what i mean yeah. like i want dudes to be like nope do it again do it yep. again do it again like i really want people to kick my ass in that regard in the studio you know because i hate like finding stuff that you don't like later on yeah. where you're just like man i kind of sounded like i had a my left nostril was full of snot on that yeah. one you know like <laughs> <laughs> that could have been a but, better take Fuck. but there's always there's always shit that like that i hear later on i'm sure this probably happens to everybody you know what yeah. i mean like you always hear shit later on and you're like well it's a well, sign of that's, growth that's that's what that is to me it's always like a well, sign a sign yeah. of like okay if i don't like something that i released six months ago that just means i'm growing as an artist right that just means yeah, you I'm, learned you know, something. You yeah. learned something. Like, yeah. oh, I'm not going to do that again. Yeah. Or, you know? <laughs> <laughs> well, I've kept you for a little under an hour. I'll let you go. Fucking Yule Mall, uh, 18th. Yule Mall, baby. That's a ride, baby. December 18th. December 18th, 7 p.m. EST, my time. Yes. 4 p.m. Um, Pacific, my it's time. It's over an hour. There's a ton of songs from all eras of the band. They're live in four different locations. It sounds, it's the best sounding live shit we've ever put forth. Yeah. So I'm excited about that. And I think that you boys and ghouls will like it. Yeah. Go get your tickets. Yulemall.nightshiftmerch.com. 
That's They're also only where you can watch it. 10 bucks, baby. 10 bucks. Cheap. That's cheap as For that's 10 cheap. bucks, we're going to come to your house and I'm going to pull my dick out and yeah. I'm all, the, all different kinds <laughs> and of And I'm going to I'm going to piss on your car. That's what we're going to do. Yeah. Yes. Yes. Dance around so like with I one said, nut hanging. Uh, <laughs> pretty much after this, I'm going to go watch it and find out what I did while Hell I was blacked out. Yes. Well, <laughs> Godspeed, you black emperor. I'm a <laughs> <laughs> I am Riley McShane, host of the Metal Blade live series and singer for Allegion. This has been my homie and his cat. Oh, Kitty, right there. That's Kitty Man right there. He's <laughs> uh, he's food motivated like uh, me. Yeah, same. Trevor, <laughs> thank you again so much for hanging out with us, man. Always a fucking pleasure. And uh, I'm going to fucking bother you about LASIK uh, here shortly. Uh, yeah, man, I'll, I'll totally perform it on you in my garage, yeah. <laughs> no problem. Yes, I want, a, I want a basement tattoo, but eye surgery. Yeah, yeah, uh, I got you, man. Right. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do it with a guitar string. Yeah. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> uh, all right, thanks for watching.